When the scribes and Pharisees asked our Lord about the greatest commandment, he replied, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. So why do we hear some of today's most prominent pastors saying things like this? It had everything to do with how we talk about the Bible. And specifically, or along with that, what we point to as the foundation of faith, which for most Christians, unfortunately, is the Bible. We need to do better. We need to love God with all our hearts and stand unashamedly on the rock of His Word. We need to love the Lord with all of our souls and respond to the worldview issues of our day with the wisdom and discernment that comes only from Him. We need to love the Lord with our minds and understand the calling of God's people in every area of life in God's world. We need to love the Lord our God with all our strength and face the work of building a life-giving, God-honoring culture. Join us for 10 days at the Runner Academy for Cultural Leadership as we consider how the gospel influences all of life and culture and the role that we have to play in applying foundational Christian thinking to every area of life. This is The Academy. I am Eli Ayala of Revealed Apologetics, and I will be bringing a six-part series on presuppositional apologetics. What is this called, The Apology Academy? It's just called The Academy. Okay. What's up, everybody? My name is Pastor Jeff Durbin, and you're watching Collision Today. I'm going to be interacting with an atheist on TikTok. So here we go. Unsupervised and unhinged. Welcome back to Cultish the Aftermath. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Ask Me Anything. So you are watching Apologia Radio's after show exclusively for all access. Non rock a boatus must stop. I don't want to rock the boat. I want to sink it. Are you going to bark all day, little doggy, or are you going to bite? Brett, delusional. Yeah, I love you, delusional. Yeah. Delusional is okay in your worldview. I'm an animal. You don't chastise chickens for being delusional. You don't chastise pigs for being delusional. So you calling me delusional using your worldview is perfectly okay. It doesn't really hurt. <laughs> she hung up on me. Yeah! Oh! What? What? Desperate times call for faithful men and not for careful men. The careful men come later and write the biographies of the faithful men, lauding them for their courage. Go into all the world and make disciples. Not go into the world and make buddies. Not to make brosives. Right. Don't go into the world and make homies. Right. Disciples. Well, I, yeah. got, I got a bit of a jiggle neck. <laughs> That's a joke, Pastor. When we have the real message of truth, we cannot let somebody say they're speaking truth when yeah. they're not. Take an amazing journey to a place that will blow your mind and move your heart so you will never be the same again. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, remove the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless, plead the widow's cause. And that is from Isaiah chapter one. Uh, welcome everyone to another episode of Apologia Radio. Very excited today, I got a couple good friends with me today. Uh, Pastor Jeff is I think he might be flying right now. I'm not quite sure. He, him and Carmen were in, in Missouri. We'll talk about that for a hearing yesterday for a bill there in Missouri. Uh, we'll update you on that. Uh, but before I get... 
oops, I'm having a hard time with my stuff here, so forgive me. Um, I was going to say that today's a sad show because it is Joy the Girl's last show with us ever after like 10 and a half years. So. It is. <laughs> not not excited. <laughs> Can you say never? Like ever? Would you have me on again? Well, I mean. As a she as a, as a host, I guess. Yeah. I guess we could bring you in. You're going to be doing Sheologian still anyway, so. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. I'll come visit. Maybe I'll sit in this chair again. But you're right. Not as yeah. a host. I'll be a guest. Yeah. Which we treat our guests well. We do treat so our guests well. I wouldn't be opposed. Yeah. I'm just not happy about <laughs> it. So it's just all there is to that. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot more uh, Zach Conover, though. That's for sure. You'll be. Yeah fulfilling that role more frequently so um but yeah we'll we'll we we'll, we'll talk more but it's okay. just a sad day it's a sad day and jeff's not even here to be with you unfortunately so yeah it's definitely <clears throat> the end of an era yeah a decade yeah which yeah i guess isn't technically an era but how long is an era i don't know do we know i bet lounge slugger knows probably <laughs> undefined okay <laughs> it's an era okay <laughs> there you go an era see yeah Zach, I'll just go ahead. Speaking of Zach Launchlager, he is uh, probably has the most knowledge of unusable facts of any person I've ever met in my entire life. That is true. <laughs> that meme of the uh, Roman guy blasting a kid in bed with historical facts is remarkably accurate. <laughs> Zach, always like that doesn't matter where we're at. And Dennis, I'll, Dennis Sarfate is with us today too. What's up, dude? Dude. I'll, I'll second this on Zach. Like, literally, we'll be walking through the airport, and he's like, you want to know how you make this? And I'll be like, yeah. um, sure. It's it's like walking with an encyclopedia. Yeah. It doesn't history, matter where no, we're at. I mean, history-wise, yeah. too, is it's in, it's impressive. It doesn't matter where you're at or what you're doing. We were like, at, remember we were at that little podunk little uh, cafe in Greer? Yeah. And he's like, oh, this glass is from this year, because I can tell because of the line and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, how did anyone know that I mean, he could either be really, like honest and he or really doesn't know up. it or he's just making it up because we yeah. believe him anyway yeah if you have the confidence and you're kind of like i'm supposed to be here people kind of don't question yeah <laughs> <laughs> when i'm around luke i do have a fairly good radar about things he doesn't know about uh, it's so, most things you know, it's <laughs> large. It's about 95 percent <laughs> yeah. tell you what if you ever want to go visit the uh air, the air museum in salt lake city he's your tour guide so i'll tell you that much he he knew everything about every plane in there I didn't even have to read the plaques. It was or Mount like, Rushmore. Or we Mount, went to Mount Rushmore. Yeah, it was just, it was amazing. He was telling us about the making of it, the chisels that they were using, and <laughs> where the chisels were made. Where they were made. Um, I went to Mount Rushmore one time, and um, it was completely covered in fog. Oh, we, that's like, the whole time. Yeah, we like, like went like out of our time. way to go see it, and we got there just in time for the nighttime thing where they like light it up. They yeah. do this whole <laughs> little white. They do this whole little display, and then they shine <laughs> these huge lights, and it was just this wall of fog, and we were like, <laughs> "Okay." That's what right. was the first time I we went to the Grand Canyon. It was oh, yeah. literally covered in fog; you couldn't see anything. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of creepy, actually. But yeah. you grew up right, Zach. Like you could like walk to the. Yeah, I grew up close to Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore uh, yeah. For several years, we did a dinner theater at the base. And uh, I have a lot of friends whose grandpas worked on the mountain. Do tell. Wow. What, what does a dinner theater at the at Mount Rushmore entail? <laughs> well, my siblings and I played American folk music. And I told history stories. And then people paid money for it, which shocked me. But it worked. Did you play the spoons and the washboard? <laughs> or are you on the jug? Up. Yeah, right. Stand up bass. <laughs> He's got a great voice. You ever heard him sing at church? Yeah, I don't know how Man. you can miss it. He belts it. He belts it out. We need him on yeah. worship team over here. He belts it out. So, all that to say, uh, I'm excited to have these two guys on here. We we do so much together. I can't. Eat. Well, we could spend a whole show just going down the list of things we do together. But uh, the main reason we want to have uh, Zach and Dennis on today was talk about their new project the republic sentinel um but before we do that let's uh i mentioned action for life um so you guys dennis is the president zach's the, the vice president right correct yep that's okay. correct um and uh i am the chairman of the board <laughs> so um so 
a lot of I think a lot of people don't realize that Action for Life is our um, lobbyist arm of what we're doing with an abortion now. So it's everything's hand in hand. We're doing everything together, um, but we're able to do stuff politically because um, it's a five one C four. So um, before we get into the Sentinel, Dennis, you want to update everyone on? Yeah. Well, what's first. Going on? I always I always call Zach my VP now. I started out saying he was my partner, and that really ended up not being the the best. <laughs> yeah, didn't. yeah first words. These I, days, I you got to be careful. Be real with that. careful. I'd be like, yeah. I have a wife, but uh, so yeah. This this past year, sixteen states had bills of equal protection. You know, we had more I think before Roe was lifted by the Supreme Court, and I think a lot of that was due to people wanting to fight it and now that supreme court has overturned it they've almost kind of just said oh well abortion must be ended because roe's gone and i think that's the reason why we had some states fall off but um at least these bills of equal protection are the ones that are getting put in now they've all died i know jeff went and spoke in uh the committee hearing in missouri yesterday yep. they were given one minute uh they were treated very poorly is what i'm is what i'm hearing and so that's what you're getting from these committees, right? If it wasn't from Louisiana last year, where Zach was there for most of that, um, to to listen to how these people treat us when we're trying to fight for the for the preborn and to bring light to the situation, um, it's it's an evil that needs to be fought, yeah. and, I, and I'm just honored that I get to do it. Um, that God has allowed me to be a part of it. You guys have asked me. Uh, but to go through this and to learn the political side from Zach and mm. how this all works, you, it really makes you angry because oh, yeah. you get to see how politics truly is. Yeah, it is not good. It's, it's not good. It's, Reminds me of, like the days of like Caliglia and all the, like you think about the the kings and the emperors. You know, I'm teaching the girls at homeschool right now and about the early early years. You know, it was a mess, and I feel like exactly what our government is now. Mm. So, yeah, mm. Zach. How have you survived? Like, what's it been? Twenty five years? Yeah, that you've been doing yep, that. Twenty six, and and you still have some ginger hair. <laughs> a little bit, there's a little bit left there. The beard is compensation for the <laughs> for the hair loss up top. Um, not that you would know anything about that. Nope, I wouldn't. Not a thing. No um, one knows. He never takes his hat off. He sleeps. In. <sighs> Shh. It's not true. I've actually <laughs> known Luke for so long that I know what he looks like without a beard. Oh, ah, that I was a short period of time. <laughs> Please explain what <laughs> this I, looks like. I had to because I had to get an ultrasound on my jaw and they went in and they were like, yeah, we can't do this with a beard. So I had to shave it and that was really sad. But I grew it back quickly. <laughs> it comes back. It's been a long time. I've had a long time. An old friend. An old friend. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see this, Luke. I'll find <laughs> like, a picture like, and send it to you. No, let's just do it again. Like you should cut it on air. Like oh. Joy's last it's Joy's last show. Bro, I'm like Samson, do you I'll like I'll wilt. <laughs> uh, you know, it is a sign of mourning, Luke. I mean, if you're really serious about this sad act. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Joy I can't believe you're leaving us. Yeah. Sorry, I keep coming back to that. How long have we known each other? Let's see. It's about sixteen years, right? Fifteen. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had I was probably 18 years plus three months old. Yeah. Wow. And now I'm 34. Yeah. So Joy lived with us for yep. a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. That was a fun experience <laughs> uh, before I had any kids. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's been a long time. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Lots. I am mourning. Lots See, has I happened. Can't. I'm like, I'm just like n in no mood today. It doesn't. I think it doesn't totally feel completely real at this point. Mm. So. Yeah. Until you arrive in West Monroe. Yeah. And then yep. tr and then Trey's, uh, Trey. Trey's your pastor. Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, See, huh. Everyone here knows Trey. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. If they if they weren't going to Trey's church, I would I would not put be the stop in to it. Yeah, I would have kiboshed <laughs> that on the line. I'm, <laughs> I'm considering church discipline. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Um anyway, sorry. Hey, hey Gabe, I'm gonna play something here real quick. Hold on. Before we get too serious, um, which I probably have people complain about in the chat, if it like we aren't serious within like someone, thirty seconds. Someone quite literally said, "No James, yeah, no that. Jeff, no me." Bye. Well, just you know, James is very rarely on this show. True. So I'm gonna okay. Hold Christian on. viewers just don't like watching friends hang out. Okay. And have fun. I'm together. gonna play this video. Forgive me, it's not the best quality, but it's all I could find. Are you ready, Gabe? 
Yep. Okay, here we go. Oh, there's no volumes on it. Good. Oh, I see. <laughs> wow. I dug that one up for Dennis. That's yeah. hilarious. That's never made an appearance six, on Apology Radio. So. Six more people just dropped off the show. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's enough of this. <sighs> I had to find a good video for you. I like that you queued that up just for your friend. Yeah, you know. That was I just, nice. I do what I can. <laughs> he does make me feel really good. Yeah. Like, all the time with this stuff. Like, king of closer comments and this and that. I've been retired for, I don't even know how long now, four years, and I just feel like he just keeps keeps me in the spirit, you know? Yeah. He'll always be the king of closer. Yeah. It's not like they're going to give that title to someone else. It's like, the, you know, like the the great Bambino or something like that. It's a one, yeah. one person, you know yep. what I mean? Yeah. We watched The Last Samurai the other day with the girls, and that was fun to kind of see japan and know that we lived there and yeah how that whole went down you know that was based on true story true events yep. some yeah. of it not all yeah. of it yep. uh no that the, the part that tom yeah. cruise played was exactly. actually a french uh, uh yeah. military person who mm. did that who went over there and trained i never thought that the americans would send over a general or whatever and let him go fight in a war in another country that's kind of weird isn't it zach you're i mean you're the history buff unfortunately by that time it was fairly common we did it to hawaii um, wow, and that was actually yeah, a big did. part of the apologies we had to make. Um, the, the imperialism really started a little bit before Teddy Roosevelt, and he really put it on steroids. But after the Civil War, um, when Lincoln <laughs> did what he did, some of it's good, uh, but the way they went about it was very bad. Wow, and uh, that imperialism really started to spread. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, just put another damper on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, Joy's leaving uh, imperialism. What else can we like, cover? Man, alive. Uh, Dennis <laughs> how about, is how about media right collapse? That, yes. That's okay. Let's just <laughs> more fun. Okay. So, no, that's a good transition, actually. So, tell us about the Republic Sentinel. What's going on with that, and what the plans are. And I'm very excited for. I actually, had the pleasure of writing a little article for you guys. A couple. I think you'll actually be up again this Sunday. Uh, I think oh. that uh, that Rooster Cogburn piece is, is oh in sweet the, I didn't loaded know that. Up. All right, yeah, it's starting to come. Sweet, okay. coming along. So we'll ha- we'll have the proof for you tomorrow. Sweet. Um, but the the Sentinel is uh, a new news entity. Um, it is growing at a thousand subscribers a day and has been for almost a month. Wow. Uh, we're very excited. Continues to grow dramatically. Um, the Green Dragon Tavern Show is our flagship news talk show. Once a week, uh, goes live on Friday mornings. Um, Dennis and I uh, just finished uh, cutting that for this week, and uh, you guys will be excited about it. Some of the, we'll give you a sneak peek here. Um, the uh, legacy media continues to suffer serious, serious consequences for not caring about the truth. And yeah. that's really what's going exactly. on, right? You look at them, and they're, they're saying, you can't believe your own eyes. You have to listen to us. You have to believe what we tell you. And so uh, that is not working out for them. Vice News, uh, yeah. appropriately named, is uh, close to bankruptcy, almost certainly going there. Um, BuzzFeed is in trouble. WAPO is laying off 7,000 people, I believe. Uh, it's in, I believe it was 7,000. Um, both Fox and CNN are bleeding viewers. Um, Tucker Carlson posts a video from his basement and gets 80 million views. Um, Fox gets 1.8 million wow. uh, and in a slot that they got three million in yesterday you know the day before mm. uh, a couple of days before so there is no question um, people are tired of being uh, being told that you can't you can't believe your own senses yeah. you have to mm-hmm. trust us it doesn't matter whether or not you can observe a mask working it doesn't matter whether matter whether or not you believe that the world is going to end in 12 years because of global warming you know, have you noticed it's always 12 years it was 12 years 12 years ago and now it's hmm. still 12 years it's kind of like the, the the pagans um second return and you know 89 reasons why it's, it'll be 89 it's harold camping all over yeah. again yeah. yeah and so um people are looking for other sources of news and uh, we are looking for ways to um provide that service the sentinel has uh up to the minute uh reporting we actually uh were uh the lead in breaking uh there were a couple other smaller sites, smaller like us, um, but we broke the um, UN uh, legalized pedophilia 
report. Um, we got it. That was uh, before everyone else found that and got it out. Uh, I'm very excited about our staff of, of writers now, and they're covering um, topics that, uh, that are necessary that you need to know about in order to interpret and impact the world around you. Um, so we, we're very excited about it, and uh, we're very excited to have Dennis uh, co-hosting the Green Dragon Tavern show. Awesome. That's exciting. It is I exciting. didn't know that was happening. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's new to me to, to be so in tuned with the pol- politics and all the, th- the policies that are going on and what people are voting for. Uh, the biggest thing, you know, recently is the debt ceiling. Um, but I think the news thing is such a, a crazy thing because I was a Fox News, you know, follower all the time. Oh, sure. Especially, like, you know, Trump versus Hillary, yeah. this That's last election. Had, That's all we yeah. had to, to listen to. And now, like you've kind of saw after the 2020 election, they really went one way. And I was starting to think, well, that doesn't seem honest. And then you go to COVID and all of these things that if you believe that a mask didn't work or if you thought that the vaccine wasn't a good thing, you were con- a conspiracy theorist, all this stuff, you know, the, it was a man-made uh, out of a lab uh, mm-hmm. virus but if you thought that you were crazy and here we are three years later where they're starting to say oh yeah you know what that was right and then nothing happens to them right right they they put this hysteria out there right. into the world everyone's crazy no one will even go near anyone and there's no repercussions for them they can say what they want do what they want even if they're five percent accurate yeah and that, that's it yeah no accountability what kind of news is that yeah yeah very boldly almost without Almost like there's this assurance that like, well, they don't remember. Yeah. Just like not even ex- anticipating anyone to hold them accountable. They're Americans. Americans are dumb. You know, they'll get over the next thing, you know. Yeah. It's constantly the, the, the process, how things work. Like think about the Las Vegas shooting, right? right. Mm-hmm. That horrific thing. Have you heard a peep about it? There yeah. was one random thing that came out a few weeks ago. Uh-huh. And they just like, again, they just, they were saying that part of his they were attributing part of his motive to like uh being upset with the casino Mm. and and that was however that that article i remember it stood out to me because you didn't hear anything about it afterwards and then what years later five six years later just one little article and then yep, yep passed by in the news cycle gone again covid was like one of the one of the most permanent installations in the news cycle for I mean, since yeah. I've been an adult, last three mm-hmm. like, I mean, really there, I don't think, I can't think of anything except for September 11th in my life mm-hmm. that like stayed in the news for as long mm. as it did. But I mean, I'm sure there's other things, but. And I think that's what's so big about the Sentinel is you have Christians who are doing the reporting The and, you know, Joy says it in, in the opening, if we have the truth, how can we stand to let them say they have the truth right. when they don't? Right. And it's like. We need to report the news. Like climate change is one of the biggest things, and they they hold climate change up there like it's 100 percent fact. Still, still to this day, yep, bleeding the country for yeah. every penny, billions of dollars poured into it, yeah. and um, with nothing to show. With like, nothing we to show. We were even just saying, like, I I have never, n- not a single time. Maybe I missed it, <laughs> but I've never seen someone go. You remember how we had all that stuff for climate change and all the money and everything? Well, this is what we built. We mm-hmm. built a brand new skyscraper that runs off of dreams and <laughs> hopes. Uh, not even that. Nothing ever. Nothing. nothing. No single building. No nothing. Just like, I'm like, what did you do with the, all those billions of dollars? Because yep. I feel like I'd be able to do something with $1 billion. I feel like that's quite a bit of yeah. money. Like you could. Yeah. You could really do something with yeah. it. <laughs> well, I think something you said, Dennis, I mean, the the media's been probably the cause of this, but just our our, our culture is so, our attention spans are so short, mm-hmm. right? And so it's like <laughs> the media comes on, drops this mass hysteria thing, everyone freaks out, and you're right, and then it's like five minutes later, well, let's move on to the next mass hysteria thing, you know, and we forgot about, yeah. you know, because we're not able to, like, step back and look at things objectively and see patterns and history and you know look at the big picture and recognize what's happening we just get caught up in the moment and and so that's why they've been able to prey on people for so long but i think you're right i think people have just just had enough i think the i think this last three years has shown that and the election messes and 
And, um, you know, going back to all these media places folding, like like Zach was saying, like th- my thoughts on that is because I don't I didn't wear the shirt, but woke is broke. <laughs> right. Like um, people have had enough, I think, of, of the woke stuff. And uh, it's not selling. Mm-hmm. And people, these big, ma- big, massive companies that have been just going full in on the woke stuff, they're they're bleeding. Like it's not just the media; it's like Disney, like other places like that. They're losing money left and right, and it's not selling. And they're like realizing that, and it's like, okay, that was fun for like three years while it lasted. Um, but you know, it's like like Vice, for example. I used to really like some of Vice's stuff. They had some really, really good stuff. You know, obviously they had some really awful stuff too, but. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's some really great stuff. You know, we used to always do BuzzFeed every ep- yeah. every episode. Remember, yeah. and I remember like because wow, they had those like fun little games and like quizzes and stuff. And then yeah. all all of a sudden, like overnight, it switched to like completely woke. I remember being like, I can't even read BuzzFeed yeah. anymore. This is yeah, just bad. obscene. So yeah, then it um, just be kind of ca- they became something to make fun of. Yeah, but yeah, I think people just want. There's a lot of information to know out there, and so people want to have a resource that they trust yep and i think more people are at least i hope more people are sort of realizing that like your worldview really shapes Mm -hmm. uh, what information you find important or even just in terms of how you would read a situation or what's happening and what the implications of that are you need someone that shares thoughts like you sure um that can help you like sort of wade through all this collective information that's out there. People just want something that they trust that they, yeah. they go, well, like I know that this person reported it and I trust that person. So like, I believe what they say. Well, yeah, you know? like you said at the attention span, right? Yeah. Everyone, you can get a, a news feed on your cell phone. It comes up and right away, most people in right now in the world or even in this country alone, see it as oh that's fact like this is definite without like i go back to jeff sermon last sunday it's like where's your evidence like where's let's break down the truth before you start jumping onto this and attacking the uh, the one side let's lay out the evidence and let's see like equal weights and measures let's measure this out to make sure that this is honest reporting and i think you'll go back the last three years there's been a lot of dishonesty within the media yeah Yeah. Yeah, well and we've we've like kind of collapsed our our actual justice system in favor of like the court of public opinion. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, if you really want to stick it to someone and get justice, all you have to do is make sure the world hates them via the media. But that kind of ignores, uh, well, every kind of ignores it totally ignores (laughs) what, what uh, this country was set up to be. So, you know, makes Mm -hmm. sense. We'd see some decline. Yeah, for sure. With that. Well, I mean, this is even a problem within the church. You know, like, I'm just... <laughs> I was having this conversation with somebody the other day. You know, it just always seems like there's some big theological controversy on Facebook. You know, and it's just, like, one thing, you know, and it lasts for five minutes, you know. And then yeah. it's, like, something else pops up a week later and everyone forgot about the thing. Everyone was up in arms about the week before. Mm-hmm. You know, and so the conversation I was having was, like, honestly... You know, I've, some of these issues are important, but it's like I just got too much going on to care. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, I'm like probably to a fault. I'm like I probably should care more, but I'm like I got like real world issues I'm dealing with, you know. And and next week someone's gonna be on to the next thing. And um, but I I think that's a problem within the church. You know, if we wanna if we wanna change the culture, you know, with the gospel, like it <laughs> needs to start within the four walls of our churches. Um, and uh, yeah, we gotta go from there. So. Um, I have a question. Yes. Can you guys explain the name of the podcast? Yes, Zach, go ahead. I'm sure Zach has so. some history behind that. <laughs> I figured. Oh, it's awesome history. <laughs> yeah. Sit back. So founding father Samuel Adams, when the um, royal governor would disband the legislature because he didn't like the fact that they were doing their jobs, would say, let us go to the Green Dragon and talk a little treason. And by that, he meant... Uh, we can repair to the Green Dragon as as legislators and continue doing our jobs, and the Crown will call it treason, but that's the place we can go. The Green Dragon Tavern was actually owned by the Sons of Liberty, led by Dr. Joseph Warren, the man who sent Paul Revere on his ride. Revere left from the Dragon on the night of April 18th to ride to Lexington Concord, 
Um, when the Boston Tea Party happened, the rally point was the Green Dragon Tavern. They left from there and, and marched across to the wharfs, to where the, the ships were anchored. Um, it is the place where Joseph, Joseph Warren received the news, probably from the military governor Gage's wife, um, which way the British were going and what their intentions were uh, during the battles of Lexington and Concord. And so it's always been the place where um, men, who, men and women who care about liberty and freedom gather to discuss uh, the issues of the day and to learn what they need to know in order to move forward and, and impact liberty and freedom. So mm. that's the inspiration for the name. Um, the building is a new building, but there's still a Green Dragon Tavern there. It's now just kind of your normal Irish pub. It kind of looks like a normal Irish pub in there. Um, but the building next door was actually built before 1700. There are no, there are no building records for it because it was before Boston started keeping them. It's now wow. the Union Oyster House. Across the street is the Bell and Hand Tavern, which is one of the oldest uh, uh, concurrently operating taverns in America. Um, so it's uh, it's a really great area. Um, if you get a chance to go downtown Boston, that's where it is. Um, go now while well, you can do it without a mask. So I'm going to play a game of Stump the Lautenschlager. <laughs> what, uh, oh. Do you happen to know where the original name came from? So no one actually really knows. No. There is a green dragon on a crane. Um, you know, those iron things that stick out that the signpost sits on. Yeah. It's part of our logo, and that was there from long before. Um, there is a Green Dragon Tavern in, um, in Lord of the Rings, and so right. it was the name of taverns in England. That's where both of them got it, and it's probably named for some tavern that, that somebody went to in England. All right. Well, I didn't. There, go, there goes your opportunity to stump them. Well, you know, I thought I'd try. <laughs> well, you can try again. I'll, I'll try yeah. to say something else. Half an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Wikipedia is handy, Luca. You're going to be over there reading it, looking, <laughs> looking for I trivia. The, yeah. Wikipedia, which isn't always your most subjective source of truth either. <laughs> uh, it's true. It's a public source, though, so it's an interesting, yeah. it actually is an interesting place. Yeah. You can go and correct it. So, Zach, you were kind of quiet while we were talking about, you know, why a lot of this media stuff is uh, folding I was just curious what your thoughts were on that, if there's anything you want to add to that. You know, yesterday, the New York Times, in their daily news alert, their daily email, uh, had a, a piece they called the 90% story. Um, and they were talking about how the hardest political stories for a reporter to cover and for our pundits to analyze can be those that are neither 100% stories nor 50% stories. They would define a 100% story as something that everybody knows is true. And here are the examples um, in w that they say these are 100% stories. Joe Biden won the 2020 election. The planet is warming. Crime and inflation are higher today than a few years ago. Well, only one of those things is, is empirically verifiable. You can empirically verify that crime and inflation are higher today than they were a few years ago. You cannot verify that the planet is warming over anything more than a few years. You could say that the planet is warmer now than it was five years ago, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. that's empirically verifiable information. There is no information from 100 years ago. You can't go back 200 years, three, four, any kind of, any, any period of time that, that has any significance whatsoever in defining global warming. You can't. You can't call that a 100% story. Yeah. And you certainly can't call Joe Biden won the 2020 election. Well, he's president now, so in that case, I guess he won. But that's not the sense in which they meet. Right. <laughs> so here they are calling that's a 100% story. And then they say 50% story is where, you know, typical news story where this side says this and this side says this and you just report it both. And, you know, you leave it there and leave it at that. Journalism. Um, hmm. Their case for the 90% story is the debt ceiling fight, which is going on in Congress right now. It's the big news item. Uh, the Republicans in Congress are... Uh, being dragged along by about 20 conservatives who include uh, my my friends like Thomas Massey, uh, Andy Biggs, who represents Chandler, mm -hmm. Dennis's congressman, actually, um, Chip Roy, who's a great guy. I don't know him as well. Met and worked with him a little bit. Um, and uh, Jim Jordan, who uh, has become quite the stalwart. Uh, these guys required that before McCarthy could pass a debt ceiling hike, increasing how much money the U.S. could borrow, we're up to nearly 32 trillion now, which is a number I, you can't wrap your head around. No. Um, but before they would allow them to say, okay, we're not going to default on our debt, they required that the House bill include several initiatives rolling back some of the most egregious spending, including the, the crazy $400 billion uh, student loan forgiveness thing, right? Um, and so the Democrats are calling that a 90% 
story, be, or the Democrats in the New York Times uh, news uh, office are calling that a 90% story because, well, both sides have some truth, but it's kind of hard to tell. And then they go into this fishy, gushy, squeezy thing in which they say, well, Republicans have a lot less truth than Democrats. Democrats always just automatically raise the debt ceiling and Republicans don't. And that makes Democrats better. Mm. And anyone who reads that, you sit there and you go, well, why is it better to to say that we can just spend indefinitely? Right. When Joe Biden was elected to the Senate 51 years ago, 51 years ago, Joe Biden was elected to the Senate in 1972. <sighs> For a listeners our age, just wrapping your mind fact, around the fact that 1972 is 51 years ago. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> you weren't born yet, right? Not, not oh, yet. I was, okay. I got in the last two months of the 70s. I was born okay. in November of 79. <laughs> but... In, our debt was, I think, $427 billion. That's half a trillion dollars. Now it is nearly $32 trillion. So from half a trillion to $32 trillion in 50 years. 9% of that growth has happened since Joe Biden got elected. Think about wow. 9% of that kind of spending. And the, the self-proclaimed impartial journalists are claiming that that makes Democrats better. That you could you could have it's it is around if my if my memory serves me correctly and I did the math right it's over 27 percent of the entire national debt has been accrued by the current administration. It sounds like a 50 percent story to me. Yeah, I mean it kind of does. <laughs> and they have the effrontery number one to define a 100 percent story as climate change, and number two we're going to say that that the Democrat case for continuing to spend so much money that our entire way of the entire way the United States exists as we know it is in question. Everyone's looking around going, I'm not sure how long we can do this. Yeah. And the New York Times is saying, you can't, you can't use your own eyes. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Democrats are 90% right. Yeah, and they're still lying, right? Even now on this whole debt ceiling, they're actually telling people, well, the Re Republicans, they just want to take money away from veterans. They want to take money away from this group. And it's like... The White House. Yeah. The White House says this. We literally just want to... Like, true conservatives, and you're, this is like the, the Freedom Caucus is what's holding yeah. all this up, right? And there, there's less government, more America. Like, like we need the people mm -hmm. to speak up. And the media is still lying and, and holding it out now and saying it's their fault for wanting to save money. Like... Yeah, let's keep spending and let inflation go through the roofs and let's just be put our country in a far greater hole yeah. instead of just being honest about it and saying we don't want to keep spending. Yeah. You have to raise the debt ceiling. We can't default, but you have to cut costs, yeah. right? I, I used the analogy earlier today. It's if I When I told the girls about all this, they were trying to figure it out. I said, oh, let's just say our house. Let's say our debt was getting so crazy amount, like so high we would cut out certain things. Like it might be like your third gym membership. It might be like yeah. all these little things that you don't need that yeah. if you take out enough of them, okay, we're, we're settling back down, but we don't, yeah. we're, we're propagating stuff for transgenderism in India. We're trying to get fit the count the salmon in the North Northwest Pacific ocean. You know, it's like, what are we doing? Like we're spending money freely, just, yeah. you know, throwing it out. And the media is not honest about it. They want to yeah. hide it. Yeah. Well, and people are greedy. And they want free stuff. And yeah. So that's why they are allowed to keep uh, extending or growing the debt ceiling because people are like, well, if you cut that out, then I got to pay for my education. Mm. Go, f go imagine that. Like, <laughs> I know that's <laughs> right, a you can foreign concept, but just that's a kind of it. stuff. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, I want of welfare and I want this and I want that and I don't want to have to pay for it. And it's like. No, you're not well, going to pay for, for it, but your kids and grandkids and great grandkids are going to be paying for it. So thank well, you. Well, they that. actually are paying for it, right? Yeah, look at yeah, the, yeah. Look at the inflation and the cost of goods when we stop making stuff, which is really what's going on. All of this has one big effect, right? People are paid to not make stuff, to not do things that people want to pay for. Yeah. So we don't have to do those things in order to buy what we want to buy. For yeah. now, you can do it. It's, it's you're putting it on a credit card. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem is that every time you do that. The dollars that you spend tomorrow are worth less. Yeah, and it's a, it's a very hard it's it's hard to wrap your mind around all of that, right? It's mm. hard for people to kind of understand that the dollars I have in my bank account are actually worth less because of the dollars that Joe Biden sent me last year as you know as as whatever whatever dollars at the IRS. You get these checks in the mail. You like what? Five thousand bucks for what? From the IRS? This is not a refund. What is this? Yeah. Yeah.
that, that this is what we're talking about. And then you have all the all the programs. This is the first time in a really long time when Republicans have had the wherewithal to stand up and say, we're not going to spend in the same way. It's been a uniparty when it comes to spending. And it would be a uniparty right now. It would be the Democrats are no different from the Republicans, Kevin McCarthy, Nancy Pelosi. Pelosi, it doesn't matter. They're all willing to spend. When all of a sudden you've got a razor thin um, vote difference in the House. And that means that anyone who's willing to say, yeah, I'm not doing it, actually has some power. And it started when McCarthy was elected. And now you have conservatives controlling the agenda. So they can tell McCarthy, if you don't give us these votes on the floor and you don't, then we're not going to allow it to proceed. Hmm. And they can actually carry th- carry out on carry it out. Good for them. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of things going on congressionally that are actually very exciting. It's the first time in my lifetime that this kind of thing has happened. Yeah, the first time in my lifetime, and I kid you not, it's not just since I've been paying attention. I've been working professionally in politics since I graduated high school. But even before that, you can go back and historically look and go, when's the last time you remember the Republicans going, yeah, if you don't actually give us these dramatic spending cuts, and we're going to stick to it then you don't get to raise the debt ceiling. And, and that's why the, the, the Democrats that, that have to work for news are losing their minds. And, they, mm. and I mean, you could, it doesn't matter, Democrat, Republican, they love big government, they love spending. And they're looking around going, well, no other nation in the world except for Denmark actually requires a second vote to borrow money. They just set the budget and then you just borrow until you're done spending. Right? Mm. And, and in America, we have, <laughs> thank God. Yeah, that seriously. You actually have, their, <laughs> Congress is required to vote on whether or not you can borrow more money. Mm. That's actually a really good thing. Yeah. And it's, it's shocking to see um, impartial news like the New York Times say these things. And then there are a lot of conservatives like, we're not shocked. We never paid attention to those guys to start with. But it, what's, <laughs> what's fun is there are people who are not hard nut conservatives who are starting to go, that, that doesn't add up. That doesn't make sense. Just like they did when when the federal government started saying or that it was okay, and then your local government says you can't leave your house, you can't go to church, yeah. you can't go to work, right. you can't go to the grocery store. Right. Everybody starts going, "Well, hang on, I thought they couldn't do that." Right. Sounds like our founding fathers were following some kind of good book that yeah, uh, s- laid all this out for us. That's fifty percent news. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think that's 100% news right yeah. there. <laughs> um, well, we're going to break here in a minute. I was just going to say, uh, I, I'm, Zach, I'm, I imagine you're right behind us, but Arizona has the highest inflation rate in the nation right now. I think it's 24% last I, last I checked. And we're, I honestly we're did feeling not know it. that. We're feeling it. Yeah, trust I bet me. You are. Like, it's like food, gas. We're like, man. I what have seen happened? your gas prices. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah. what you're at like six bucks. It's, right? it's, it's, it's five, cheaper five. to get gas in Tahoe right now. Is it really? Three dollars and eighty nine cents a gallon than it is in Chandler, wow. Arizona. It's four four ninety nine for gas and diesel. Yay, it's oh. actually cheaper than gas yeah. right now. Then it's an what it should be. Um, oh, there's an interesting I want to tell you about why diesel's expensive. Okay. We'll, back. we'll we'll uh do you know what your where your is your inflation rate is by chance? Or is it close oh, to that? Or? I, I'll look up Utah's. Anyway. Yeah, Salt Lake. They got because it's like everybody that's on the east side of California right now. All the states are feeling it bad. But, anyways, let's go to break real quick, and then when we come back, we'll talk about uh, diesel costs. This Gabe, is ready? the Academy. I am Eli Ayala of Revealed Apologetics, and I will be bringing a six-part series on presuppositional apologetics. Defending the faith is super important, and I'm excited to be able to participate in helping equip you to do that effectively and biblically. In my series, we're going to be unpacking all different aspects of the presuppositional method. What makes presuppositional apologetics different than other approaches? How to answer objections to the presuppositional approach? What is the role of the authority of scripture? What is the role of theology in defending the faith? All of these things we talk about and more. We try to bring it up a notch and not giving you completely introductory material, but kind of digging deep into the ins and outs of this method. I am looking forward to equipping you and participating with you and training you uh, to be better defenders of the Christian faith. From the beginning of human history and redemptive history, there's been a conflict between light and darkness, the children of God versus the father of lies. It goes all the way back to Abraham versus his culture, Moses versus Pharaoh, David versus Goliath, the prophets versus the unfaithful, and Paul versus the philosophers. This 
collision, this antithesis has existed from the very beginning. And it's important for Christians to recognize the duty that we have before God to proclaim the truth and to take down every argument that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of God. We're commanded to have a reasoned defense for the hope that's within us. And so we need to be ready to press the antithesis to be part of that collision. Let's get started. All right, everyone, welcome back to Apologia Radio. So uh, thanks for sticking with us through the break there. Okay, so we were talking about uh, diesel prices and w why they are so expensive, and Zach's been looking up inflation rates on the break. So, Zach, why don't you bring us into that conversation? So the inflation rate question is always a good one. The 24%, see, there's the there are multiple different ways to calculate it, and this is another example of media always choosing to to do something that, that benefits a certain category, and it ain't us, right? It's not the guy on the street. Mm. And so it, you know, the media stories that I can find are anywhere between 6 and 7%, and that is with a gas price of in the 350 to 370 range. Which we're higher for, than that right now. For unleaded. Yes. Well, yeah, you guys are like a buck and a half higher than that. Yeah. That's about where we are right now. Um, so... You know, you could do the math accordingly. There are other factors you can add in there. Um, it's something that you could actually research. But I think in order to, to come to any kind of actual inflation rate conclusion, you'd have to do a lot of the research yourself mm. and decide, okay, we're going to choose these points, right? It's going to be building materials. It's going to be food. It's going to be clothing. It's going to be housing. It's going to yeah. be gas, right? Yeah. Um, well, if you look at building materials, it's gone actually gone way back down. A sheet of plywood is back down to nearly, you know, 10, 15 bucks. Because the people that make plywood were like, well, look, plywood's 75 mm -hmm. bucks a sheet. We can make lots of plywood. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that's kind of, that's the reality is that none of this is fixed. And I'm actually somewhat excited about if, if we keep, if you keep your head and you watch for what do people actually need and among those things, what could I provide? Yeah. What could I make? There are, there are tons of opportunities right now. There are opportunities that didn't exist a year ago. Sure for making things and doing things that people want. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's part of, uh, enjoy is in on a, on a new adventure because she and her family are making things that people want. Mm -hmm. Awesome. There you go. And that's how it works. And so that, now the problem is when government gets involved, right? Government gets involved and says, well, we need to fix this problem. We're going to, we're going to fix the problem. The diesel has things in it that are bad for the environment. Do you, and all of us, I think, can remember, um, when diesel was consistently always cheaper than gas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I remember decades of time when diesel was yeah. consistently cheaper than gas. I also remember, and anybody who drives a diesel knows, that diesel engines last longer than yep. gas engines. The reason are the sulfites or the sulfides that exist in normal diesel when you get diesel out of the process and and the process of of refining crude oil is a little bit like distilling alcohol it different stuff comes off at different temperatures mm -hmm. and you have these big stacks and you cap, capture it and that becomes different different petroleum products well when diesel comes off all of these these sulfur products um, that are part of it come off and they are lubricants it mm. is a natural lubricant and it's and it's why diesel is oilier right and burns slower um, well, some genius decided and promoted the idea that those um, compounds are contributing to global warming. And so the federal government, in its infinite wisdom, passes regulations. And these did not pass Congress. This is the EPA saying, this is what we're going to do. They decided that you have to filter all of those things out of diesel. And then you have to take synthetic compounds, which replace those functions in lubricating, and you have to put those in diesel. And then they have to change between summer and winter. It's also the reason why prices of both diesel and gasoline go up. Now, this all comes from talking to guys, specifically in Louisiana, which where is the center of, of the petroleum industry in America. I mm. went down and talked to the guys that actually work for the companies and run the companies that um, refine the fuel and that make the additives. And there's always been different additives, right? My granddad was a was a uh, gas truck driver he delivered the gas and there was a you got the gas from the same place it all came off the same pipeline and then you put in different additives you know shell yeah. gets this one and conoco gets that one and that's what makes the difference so additives are not are nothing new but the idea that we're going to force all of the refineries to um, filter out all of these beneficial compounds which were never proven to cause any it's no different is it really different can you burn diesel that has the 
naturally occurring sulfides and the one that doesn't where you put the synthetic ones in. Is there really a difference? No, they proved it about as well that they proved that the world is actually warmer than it was 150 years ago. Guess what? It's easy to do when there weren't records 150 years sure, ago. Huh? Yeah. But you fail to mention that. You fail to tell people that, mm. yeah, that, that didn't exist. Mm. It'll, so you, you do that and suddenly because of the labor involved, the amount of work that you have to put into, you have to pay people to do all of this and you have to filter out stuff and throw it away and dispose of it, you know, as the EPA bureaucrats tell you how, mm. and then you have to get all this synthetic stuff and put it back in. And then it changes from summer to winter. And so there are different burn rates that you have to, that they have to comply with. Wow. Uh, all rules from the EPA. So there you go. Didn't are there problems? Do we need to, do we need to keep uh, people from destroying air quality and wrecking your neighbor's land so he can't grow stuff? Yes. I, I grew up on a farm and ranch and we had to sell it because a neighboring community decided they were going to put nuclear waste down the wells right into oh, the aquifer. Geez. Yeah, isn't that brilliant? Oh my gosh. Yeah, and so eventually they, they the scheme did work out, but in the meantime, here we are, we're downwind of this, and you know it's going to destroy our farm. So we had to sell. Um, so look, defending one person from another person, that's what government's supposed to do. Government is supposed to keep me from destroying your property, from hurting your health. Mm. But that's not the argument that's made anymore. There's, there's no measure that says, well, this will actually hurt people. There's this, this unknowable uh, measurement, this unknowable standard that that's going to be carbon emissions. What a tremendous, what a tremendous thing. If I'm a bureaucrat and I can just kind of make it up and sell um, permits to make more yeah. carbon, right? Uh, that's, that's the whole scheme. That's mm. the whole thing. But I thought the and government then, was in control of your health. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the media tells you, right? Like you're, were, right? you you can't have your any say. It's yeah. it's the government, and and I, again going back to the media, this is what you get from the media. Who is literally paid for by who? George Soros owns majority mm. of the stuff that gets put out. Yeah, and so you have one well, guy or a bunch of guys that are really wealthy that have a narrative, and most they hate God. Let's be honest. Yeah. Those guys hate God. Oh, yeah. They're not going to be honest. They're not going to be right. men of faith. So yep. it's just we have to wade like, through like all this stuff like what's right, what's good, what's truth. Right. And people just are so busy. They don't want to do that. Yeah. So they just listen to whatever yeah. comes on the TV, yeah, the exactly. news channel 12. My mom's been probably watching NBC News channel 12 her, my whole life. And it's the same people saying the same stuff every time. And it's you hear it, and you're like, "Oh, mom, stop believing that!" Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, do some research. Yeah. That's not true. Interesting. Interesting. How many people are starting to do that? They're just starting to go. You know, that just doesn't taste right. That doesn't pass the smell test. Mm. I don't have to know everything. Yeah, sure. There are still people. There are still a lot of people who who just you know, eat what they're fed. Um, but that is not that is not what actually makes a nation work. It's the it, it is. There's always a skeptical minority who just subscribes to neither political. Um, trope uh, that that tends to look at things and go, I'm not sure that's true, or yeah, I think that's true, and then they go with it, right? So it's so, an interesting. Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. I was no, just, it's an interesting fact about Americans it, historically tend to put up with a problem way longer than we should. Yeah, tend to, to, to just mm. it's all it will work out. I don't have to turn my attention from my life, from feeding my kids, from going to my job, and legitimately, people are busy and want to be left alone, right? And on both sides. Um, and then you've got the people who run HOAs and they, they, they took over the COVID management. And so, but, but the majority of I have no HOA in my house, thankfully. Me neither, brother. That's why I bought this house. I refuse to even then look at a house. Let me tell you HOA. something about the HOA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they so, were the, they're the proto Karens. They're that's a bunch of Nazis. <laughs> yeah. Busy so, bodies. That's yep. what the Bible calls yeah, them. Yeah, for sure. Okay, but that's so, not a majority. So the majority of people tend to ignore a problem until it gets to be unignorable. Yeah. And it's a mm -hmm. fascinating reality. We'll see if it happens again. See if Americans can do it again. How far can you let it go? How much can the house burn down? You sit there and say it's fine until it's not fine. Yeah. Until it's actually catching your pants on fire. And then you have to do something mm -hmm. about it. Yeah, we don't want that. But it's coming. Um, so the I had a question about the gas prices. So um, I... You, Dennis and Joy have probably noticed this. I've had this conversation with my wife recent, like this last week. Um, it, I, you know, something weirds going on with gas gas prices when literally, for probably the last two to three weeks, I would say ninety percent of the gas stations in the area here all have the exact same gas prices. 
I'm like, something hmm. weird is going on here because that's not that's not capitalism, right? <laughs> like it's price fixing. Yeah, like literally mm-hmm. every single it's yeah. it's four ninety nine for for regular and four forty nine for diesel, and I would say ninety percent of the gas stations for like at least two weeks, if not three. And I'm like, what in the world is happening? Like this is not normal. Like you normally you'd see them like you know Competing very differently. And, yeah like corner to corner and it's like everywhere you go it's the same the same the same and i'm like something's going on and my wife's like well what is it and i was like i don't know i don't have an answer for that it's just weird something something's off and so i was going to ask you since you have a, a large knowledge of gas prices as well <laughs> if you happen to have any insight on that well i think that it's a common it, it can be a common problem in um a free market gone awry when you have l- large amounts of government uh, influence then or the potential the ability government can actually do these things uh, which happens when they take on more and more you have the more government regulations you have the more they can control the market and then the bigger players in the market start using government to put smaller players out of business and then they use you got this this collusion between big government and big business and yeah you start to see things like price fixing um you guys have do you guys have Maverick stations in Arizona? Yeah. Yes, in oh, like dude. up north. north. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Up right. Because they're coming, they're coming down from here. They're all over Utah and Idaho and and all over. Um, so Maverick just bought Come and Go, um, or it looks like the deal is is pretty close. Do you have Come and Goes down there? No, no. Okay. Uh huh. So there's but there's an example where you have a, a larger and larger control. And look, monopolies can be a problem. There is a point at which it is legitimate for. Uh, the market and to in, in to perhaps even use government to say, yeah, I'm not sure we should have that kind of monopoly. Um, so I'm not sure how much, obviously, the, the Maverick come and go thing may, doesn't influence prices there. But when the prices are the same everywhere, the first thing I think of is, well, they're, they're, they, they do all talk. The yeah. people that own these gas stations sure. talk. Yeah. Well, do you remember and like most of you have like you have a few, you have four or five or six companies that are going to own all the gas stations in town, sure. yeah. mm-hmm. wherever you are. Mm. And so it's not hard for them to get together and go, you know what? If we all agreed not to undercut one another, mm. we'd all make more money. See, and that's what they used to do. It they used to be where gas was so cheap, you would see it like, hey, how low can I get still make yeah, a yeah. profit? Yeah. And yeah. we'd be okay. Now they're go. It's the reverse. They're saying, how high can we charge? Yeah. And people still have to come here. So then right. finally, they were all probably sat down and said, you know what? Why don't we all just charge four ninety nine? We're all going to make a killing and everyone else has to suffer. Mm. And the reason that works Jerks. is because government enables players to use the power of government and police. Mm-hmm. See, the thing is, if you don't obey the law, eventually you get in trouble, right? You, so you're using the power of government to squeeze little players out. It's the little player who's going to go, yeah, I'm not going to play ball with that. I'm, I don't have the margins. I'm mm-hmm. going to undercut you guys, and the people will come to me, and I will get bigger. And that's the thing about the free market. But once yep. you start fiddling sure. with it that way and allowing government to play one side, well, there, are, there, there becomes an increasingly small number of people who can actually control the prices. Interesting. Okay. Well, now I can report back to my wife. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So we have about five minutes left here. So let's let's just bring this conversation full circle. And then I, I want you to tell people where to go to sign up and stuff. But um, so back to Tucker. Um, and the question I'm going to ask you is why it's a good thing that that Tucker is no longer with Fox. When I saw that I, a bunch of people, you know, were freaking out and I'm like, this is probably a good thing. Actually, I was like, you know, because. One, I mean, okay, I'm not a Tucker apologist. Let me say that. I think I like a lot of what Tucker has to say. I think he's he's spot on with a lot of stuff. I have issues with Tucker where I think he creates, he's been guilty of creating uh, that mass hysteria within the mm-hmm. conservative party mm-hmm. a lot. You know, there's a number of things the last couple sure. of years where people have been freaking out about because they watch Tucker and it never happened. So I think he's guilty there. But all that to say, I was like, this is a good thing, you know, because... He's probably handcuffed on what he can and can't do at Fox. Um, and, you know, so I think him leaving this big conglomerate, I think, was a good thing. And I, 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 it's I mean, the offers this guy has lined up is insane. Um, but um, why? What What is your take on that, Zach? Uh, I'm just curious. And I think you'd agree with me. So um, go ahead. I'll just let you go from there. Dennis and I were actually talking about that. It'll come out tomorrow morning. Okay. Uh, so we can give you another preview. But I thought Dennis is... I, I was sitting there learning from Dennis. All right. Well, then let's have, let's have Dennis fill us in. Well, yeah. So 
what do you have now? Like you saw Joe Rogan, right? Joe Rogan got booted and he go to Spotify. Yeah. You know, Tucker Carlson tweets out something three minutes, not even three minutes long, 80 million views. <laughs> so you're seeing this is like Joe Rogan's already said, this guy's going to have gold bags dropped off at his house. He, what he says, yeah. people take it as, yeah. and, and who are the 80 people, 80 million people? Well, probably the 80 million that voted for Donald Trump. Yeah. And, uh, the joke was that, you know, or Joe Biden, but you know, Tucker Carlson, <laughs> bring something where yes he has a lot of that conspiracy stuff and he and he propagates a lot of stuff where it's like all right dude like i can't listen to it Let, let's check let's check yeah. some facts over here but he was very honest about a lot of the things and i think yeah. people didn't like it you know fox yeah. rupert murdoch he owns fox and there's big pharma i mean the white house was literally tweeting out stuff for pfizer it's like they were getting right. it was like free advertisement right. like were they getting paid money for this and you had Tucker fighting all of this to be said. They got sued by Dominion for the voting. Fox got sued. They paid nine million, nine hundred million dollars out on this eleventh hour deal. He was getting in trouble with things that they didn't like. He was saying, and they booted him out. Yeah. I think it's a great thing because yeah. now he's going to go to a platform. How many people follow Joe Rogan like he's the second coming? Yeah. Right. If Joe Rogan says something or has a guest on, that's why I want Jeff to go on there. So bad. We're trying. If he can get on there, because when Joe Rogan says something, people take it as like, that is truth. And it's like, Tucker is in that same category and, and it's going to be better for him, for us. I mean, I didn't, I stopped watching after the 2020 election. I stopped watching Fox news. I just yeah. couldn't do it. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. watching news in general, it, mm -hmm. it makes your blood boil because none of it's based on a Christian value. Even yeah. Tucker Carlson, like a lot of his stuff isn't based on a mm -hmm. Christian value where there's three witnesses. Sometimes it's just one sided story where he brings them on. And it's like, well, wait a second. Like that's not biblical. Yeah. So I stopped doing it, but I think it's beneficial for him. I think he makes a ton of money. And I think you're going to start seeing these news agencies pay the price mm. when they have these provocators like mm. Don Lemon getting fired, which, which is a great thing. Cause I, I hate CNN anyway, <laughs> but I mean, literally I hated I hated watching CNN, but to watch these conglomerates fold, I think is going to be the greatest thing. Yeah for the people i agree do some research find your own information yeah. out it's out yeah. there yeah i agree and i and i'll i stopped watching fox in 2020 as well once once uh they called arizona yeah. at five o'clock p.m once i saw that i was like <laughs> what is that like that right. was it i've never watched watching Mar yeah who, who watches maricopa and goes well that sews it up yeah it was the most bizarre things i've ever seen in my life and i think that's where you see fall in line like yeah. we are going this direction. If you don't like it, Trump's old news fall in line and they folded and they went right in line. And there's a few left besides Tucker. I think that's going to keep Fox afloat. Uh, you have Brian Kilimead, Jesse waters, but if those guys start getting silenced and start making, they're going to say, see you too. And yeah. then yeah. they'll just fold. Yeah, I agree. And I, I do think, uh, I think we probably all would be in agreement with this. I, I do feel like we're kind of on a, <laughs> the, the downward end of this uh, liberal uh, upswing uh, we've seen the last few years. It seems like I think people are starting to have enough. I hope so. I, ho I hope and pray that's the case, and hopefully the, the gospel gets a good uh, revival here within our nation because I think people have had enough. So, um, uh, anyways, any uh, closing? Well, actually, any closing thoughts on that, Zach? And then I'll we'll give you a chance to point people to the Sentinel. You know, the source of information really is what it comes down to. But the problem is that you can have a trusted source. But the reason that you have that is because you do check it out. Or you, you come to trust it. And so you have to use your own brain to ask, does this smell right? Does this add up? And it's amazing how that kind of test actually works. And so the growth of opportunity for uh, there to be other news sources really is obviously that excites us. And uh, we have dedicated uh, the last several months and the next couple of years of our lives to establishing another source that uh, that can be used to cross check um, the sources that are out there. There are a lot of alternative media sources uh, sprouting up and there are two basic principles. Number one, let's be honest about our perspective. There's no such thing as um, I'd have no opinion. I'm a you know, I'm a 50 percent reporter. I just to one side and the other side and that's it or however you want to put it. No such thing. Everyone has their opinion. And traditionally in American media, we acknowledged the bent of the ownership and the people that reported the news. That's why opinion pieces exist, so that you know, okay, this is where they're coming from. You can calculate for it. That is how you're supposed to do it. 
Um, and then uh, we ha you have a commitment to truth, to honesty, to mm -hmm. actually truthfully reporting, okay, this is what actually happened. And we checked it out or we told you how much we checked it out. And this is here you have it. Um, and if it doesn't say opinion across the top, then we are sharing different sides and it will come out which side we agree with. And you'll already know that because we told you. Hmm. We're not pretending to be, oh, well, I'm neither. Hogwash. Hogwash. <laughs> so that's, that's the importance of, of, um, having, uh, of looking at the character of the publication and the people running it and asking, um, are, are, do these people know what they're talking about? Are they experts in the subject matter? Yeah. Um, I'm glad to bring 25 years of, of professional paid politics. I, I've been a federal lobbyist. I've lobbied in 40 uh, different states. I've, I've worked on uh, and even run a percentage of 200, over 200 different campaigns. Um, Dennis is, uh, uh, is a superstar. <laughs> Dennis has actually done these things. He actually has participated in leading culture. Um, and so those, those things provide, give us the opportunity to comment um, hmm. on the things that are going on. Um, and then our reporters actually honestly do uh, care about looking at these things and, and reporting on what, I, what do we actually find. What's actually going on? So go to republicsentinel.com, republicsentinel.com. Um, you can subscribe from there. You can also click the link in, if you're watching on YouTube. I believe we have a link there. Yeah. You can get a free subscription if you go there. Use the link. Um, and all you have to do is punch in your name and email. We do want to send you a daily email, one email a day. Um, and in return, you get access to uh, our free content. And the, those emails that you get are, are the notification for the content. So um, check it out. Sweet. Gabe, thank you, you want guys to go, for having us on. Yeah, for sure. Gabe, you want to go ahead and pull that pull that up there? There's I have the link. Like Zach said, that's actually in the subscription. Or I'm sorry, in the dis description, not subscription. <laughs> um, on, on YouTube there, it has the link. You guys can go and sign up for that. We get a special little link for Apologia. Uh, and then here I have the actual website. If you want to take a look, and he's got some excellent opinion writers. Let me tell you, he does one <laughs> of them. <laughs> one of them, boy. Well, Zach Conover did one as well. So yeah, I saw that. his yeah. was powerful. It was good. Yeah, Samuel Say's done a couple. It's it's just honest news, right? It's not compromised. It's Christian men and women writing articles. Uh, us and I, you know, him and I doing the the show, and it's just we're not going to compromise our integrity. Just because we don't like someone, or we're just going to report honestly. Well, this is what's going on. Yeah, and you can take it for what you want. Amen. All right, uh, Zach. Any anywhere else you want to point people to while I got you? Uh, go to republicsentinel.com, and I appreciate the opportunity. It's a pleasure to talk with you guys. Joy, Lord bless you guys and your and your travels. Thank. You. I'm honored to be part of the last show. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You got <laughs> special special little gig there dennis where can people find you action for life take action for life dot org um you can also i think you can go on ean and click um action for life through there i believe tim was trying to set that up but okay yeah look out this next year is probably going to be bigger than this year i think people are starting to see through the lies of the pro-life establishment where yeah. roe has been ended uh, babies are still being murdered in the thousands and millions. Um, and so we need to keep fighting and it's going to be a bigger fight next year because they're doing, the left is doing the exact same thing we started to do when Roe was still in. Right. Right. They, they're going state by state. And so mm -hmm. we're now watching them take our fight and, and do it state by state. So we, we need to keep, keep working and uh, keep trugging along. Yeah. I mean, this year has been... <sighs> You guys both know this because you've both, you know, been we've been working together from the beginning, well, at least with Action for Life. But I mean, the the amount of uh, increase in states this year has been <laughs> it's been nuts, like more than we can even literally more than we could even handle on our end here. So it you know it's been exponential each each year. So expecting some big things this this next year as well. So um, yeah, thank you everyone that supports an abortion now. You can go to endabortionnow dot com and help support us there in our fight to end abortion. And of course, like Dennis said, take action for life.org. Um, we do everything together hand in hand. So we need your support to help us save those babies. Uh, Zach, thank you, man, again, for being on. It's always a pleasure and fun. And I do enjoy listening to you 
ramble on thank you all. about random historical <laughs> facts so uh <laughs> and for those of you that stayed on because you wanted to and you know jeff and pastor james weren't here thank you yes thank you. <laughs> that's right thank you yes no one wants to hear me talk joy i hate this part <laughs> i'm trying to get gabe to turn my computer audio on but he's not listening um it's been fun there it is agreed I can't. I don't want to say anything else. <laughs> it's sad. We we're, love you. We're moving on to to good things still, though. Yeah, I know. Everybody involved. Hopefully, what Matthew finds that woodpecker. He will. Because if he doesn't, I'm going to be really upset that you're leaving. <laughs> or just send him a word that hey, the ivory bill woodpecker is actually in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> I it's left. It. I spotted it. It's in my backyard. I got it. We can make a video to make it look real. Talk yeah. about fake media. We can make it look real. Yeah. Totally. We'll we dress you. I remember there you dressed up as puddles. We can just dress you up as the ivory billed woodpecker. You know, who would have thought that puddles a dog would be a prophet? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was like, sorry. I know that was we a were, long time. I know ago. we were closing this episode. I think the original we did was ooh, at least five years ago. If not longer, it I think maybe it was way longer. longer. Maybe eight. It was like yeah. right when we first started going to Apologia. Yeah, just to put so it in perspective, I've almost been married for five years. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Time we did flies, the man. original puddles <laughs> about eight years ago, and it was hilarious. Everyone thought it was funny. Yeah. You know, um, and if you guys don't want to talk about, we I did this stupid video where I just as a dog and like was like, what if I want to you know pretend I'm a dog? And people mm-hmm. were like, oh, that'd be weird, you know. Um, not anymore. Not anymore. Like we just played, like we just cut that original video up and did like a one minute video or something, and everyone's like freaking out, like oh, those lyrics. I was like, this is literally like eight years old. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, what a, I mean now it's it's just becoming more and more weird and norm for people to dress like just conspiracy though. Nothing to see here. Just a little conspiracy theory, right? Yeah, just a little. <laughs> <sighs> You guys can sign up for all access at ApologiaStudios.com, and you can get your free Bonson U account at... <laughs> I just lost the website. The Bonson U... Bonson You can get there at ApologiaStudios.com. Yep. I just completely blanked out on the website. Sorry. I should know that. Um, it's an emotional always, time. Yeah, it is. A, <laughs> see, I just can't even think straight right now. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we love you guys. Thank you so much for your support, and we'll be back next week. God bless. See ya. Bye, Joy. Peace.